How's it going guys? My name's Wilson. The 2020 NBA draft will be delayed till October 16th as we anticipate potential young bright talents in Anthony Edwards, LaMelo Ball, and James Wiseman. Not the most talented draft class, but there will be a couple future all-stars to say the least. Every couple years, there will be a transcendent player who will be a superstar, but not every draft class will have a game-changing player. Some years, it's just a miss for most teams. With that said, here are 10 of the worst draft classes in NBA history. Number 10, the 1983 class. Best player and Hall of Famer Clyde Drexler, the only real superstar that made the All-Star team numerous times. Four other All-Stars, first overall pick Ralph Sampson, a four-time All-Star, two-time All-Star Jeff Malone, one-time All-Star Dale Ellis and Doc Rivers. Sampson was projected to be the next generational big with gold potential before the injury started to pile up. Unfortunately, never the same player after his third season. Knee and back problems too unbearable. Fourth overall pick Brian Scott, and 11 pick Derek Harper, very good role players, Antoine Carr, Craig Elo, and Rodney McRae, all familiar names most fans know of their connections to either facing or against Michael Jordan or being his teammate. Manu Bull was drafted but deemed ineligible after passport issues, drafted again in 85. If Samson would have reached his full potential, this class wouldn't have been on the list. 18 total all-star appearances, 7 all-NBA teams, mostly from Clyde to Glide. Number 9, the 1989 class. Despite having 9 total all-stars, none of whom were superstars, most were good for a couple seasons. BJ Armstrong made the All-Star team in 94 as a 15-point score the year Jordan was retired. Dana Barrels made it once, his only season averaging above 20. Mookie Baylock once as well, a 14-10 and 10 guy in 94. Vladi Divac being an injured replacement in 01. Sean Elliott made it twice. Cliff Robinson once in 94. Glenn Rice three times, Tim Hardaway five, and Sean Kemp six. None of these players have yet to make the Hall of Fame. The first two picks weren't great. Never Nervous Purvis became out of service Purvis when he got to the NBA. Only three top 10 picks average over 10 points for their careers. Not many late round steals either. 21 total All-Stars, 10 combined All-NBA selections. Hardaway, Kemp, and Rice were the only true All-Star players for multiple seasons. Number 8, the 2006 draft. The three most known, LaMarcus Aldridge, second overall pick, still solid to this day. Kyle Lowry, six-time All-Star, 24th pick. And Rajon Rondo, 21st pick, arguably the most underwhelming draft ever. With plenty of hype, players who failed all expectations, especially some of those with dominant college careers that captured our imagination. Five total All-Stars, two others, Brandon Roy and Paul Millsap. Roy, the most talented player, on his way to superstar status before his knee bailed him, forced him to retire early, made two All-NBA teams. First overall pick Andrea Barniani will go down as well of those soft European players who plays no defense. Adam Morrison, viewed as the next Larry Bird, played three seasons, a nightmare. Tyrus Thomas, eight seasons. Sheldon Williams, huge buzz. Patrick O'Brien and Mohamed Sine, some of the worst lottery picks in NBA history. Anthony Bennett level bad. Solid players includes JJ Redick, Rudy Gay, PJ Tucker, and Tabo Cephalosha. Everybody else forgettable. 24 total All-Star selections, 9 All-NBA teams, nobody close to MVP status. Number 7, the 1986 draft. A couple solid players who played key roles could have been one of the best classes if the tragedy of Lim Bias didn't happen. Chris Washburn, the third pick, was viewed as a Shaq caliber center, but couldn't stay out of trouble. Banned by the league after using illegal drugs, Drazen Petrovic, who made an All-NBA team in 93, killed in a car accident at 28, Arvidas Sabonis, one of the best players outside the NBA, 24 pick, didn't join the league until age 31, way past his prime, 5 total All-Stars, Brad Doherty, Kevin Duckworth, Jeff Hornacek, Mark Price, and Dennis Rodman, only the world made the Hall of Fame from this class, Doherty's career was cut short with injury, Duckworth and Hornacek, good role players, Mark Price, 4 All-NBA teams, one of the most forgotten point guards all time, solid role players, includes Ron Harper, Del Curry, Scott Skiles, Chuck Person, and Johnny Newman. Other college legends like Walter Berry and Pearl Washington never lived up to their potential in the NBA. Sadly, many will never get to see the full potential of what some of these players could have been in their primes. 13 total All-Stars and 8 All-NBA selections, a class left with unfulfilling promises. Number 6, the 2002 
2 class, very bad, 4 total all stars, Yao Ming the only Hall of Famer so far, Amari Stoudemire might get there one day, the other 2 all stars, Carlos Boozer and Karan Butler, plenty of busts, Jay Williams got into a serious life threatening motorcycle accident after his first year, cost him his entire career, Nicholas Gitishvili, the definition of a classic European bust, Dejan Wagner battled through illness and injuries, very good role players includes Nene, Tayshaun Prince, Luis Scola, Mike Dugleby, Drew Gooden, John Salmons, and Matt Barnes, 18 total all-star appearances and 11 all-NBA selections, 10 of them from Yao and Amari, Udonis Haslam undrafted. Number 5, the 1971 class, 2 Hall of Fame centers Artis Gilmore and Spencer Haywood, tenacious rebounders with great size, 7 total all-stars, Gilmore the best average 70 and 10 on 60% shooting for his career, an 11-time all-star, had tremendous success both in the ABA and NBA, 5 All-NBA teams, 5 defensive teams, 30th pick Hayward on the other hand, on verge of being an all-time great until having drug problems, a 5-time All-Star, 19-9 and 9 NBA guy, averages over 20 and 10 factoring his ABA stats, Fred Brown, Austin Carr, only 1 All-Star appearances, Curtis Rowe and Sidney Wicks out of UCLA became All-Stars as well but was awful with the Boston Celtics, 2 of the most disliked players amongst older Boston fans, Randy Smith a 2-time All-Star, solid 2 guard, most of these guys known for putting the ball in the basket and not much else, many of whom put up empty stats on bad teams which is why they get forgotten, 25 total All-Star appearances, 5 All-NBA selections. Number 4, the 1975 draft class. The 70s considered one of the worst eras of basketball, 6 total All-Stars from this class, most memorable first overall pick David Thompson, spent one season in the ABA, became a 5 time All-Star, Hall of Famer, one of the first pure athletes with crazy dunks, averaged nearly 23 points for his career, but injuries and drug addiction sadly cut his career short, 3 All-NBA teams, another All-Star, big man Alvin Adams of the Phoenix Suns, a 14 and 7 guy, 20 year pick Guts Williams, notable for his Sonic days winning the 79 title, will be free, 1 time All-Star, excellent scoring 2 guard, 20 points career score, 3 time All-Star Dan Roundtree, 14 and 9 career power forward, 5-0 defensive teams, 1 time All-Star Lionel Hollins, a solid player on the 77 Blazers team, nonetheless only one truly elite player from this draft in Thompson, 13 total All-Stars and 7 All-NBA selections overall, non All-Star players includes Daryl Dawkins and Junior Bridgman, very respectable role players, a lot of the players had poor public perception with the heavy drug use around the league back in the day causing a bad reputation. Number 3, the 1990 class, headlined and carried by 2nd overall pick Gary Payton, the Hall of Fame point guard, one of the best perimeter defenders ever, the other 5 All-Stars, not so memorable, 1st overall pick Derek Coleman, supposed to be the next big legendary power forward, never fully lived up to his ceiling, 16-9 career guy, Antonio Davis, one time All-Star, Cedric Sabalos, Tyron Hill, and Jason Williams. Key role players include Tony Kukoc, Dennis Scott, Muhammad Adu Raul, Eldon Campbell, and Kendall Gill. Enjoy nice stretches as role players, 14 total All-Star appearances, 11 All-NBA teams, almost all of which came from Peyton. If this draft didn't have GP, it would have been way weaker. In the redraftables, Peyton easily would go number one, Coleman and Kukoc the battle for second and third, Gill and Sabalos right behind, followed by the role players I mentioned. Number 2, the 1973 class. A lot of these players ended up playing a good portion of their professional careers in the ABA. 4 total All-Stars, first overall pick Doug Collins was good, made 4 All-NBA teams but never amounted to anything besides being a good scorer, him alongside second round pick George McGinnis, a 17 and 10 guy, eventually a Hall of Famer, a beast in the ABA, averaged 25 and 13 before the NBA, but known as a ball stopper, a turnover machine, 50th pick Larry Kennard became a 5 time All-Star, a 17 and 9 guy, played great for San Antonio, the other All-Star, power forward Kermit Washington, more known for his deadly punch that nearly killed Rudy Tomjanovich than anything he produced on the basketball court, 32nd pick Caldwell Jones made his only All-Star appearance in the ABA, 19 ABA slash ABA All-Star games combined, just 2 All-NBA teams, 
both by McGinnis. A lot of young guys have no idea who any of these players are besides Doug Collins, only because he coached MJ and announced his games on TNT. Number 1, the 2000 class, absolute awful on all cylinders, 5 of the top 7 players were absolute busts, guys most young fans under 20 never heard of, only 3 total all stars, all of whom made it in 2004 in the weak Eastern Conference, 19 pick Jamal McGlure after averaging just 13 points 10 rebounds, numbers that don't justify he deserved to be in, number 1 pick Kenyon Martin broke his leg before being in the NBA, wasn't quite the same but a good player in Jersey, became an all star thanks to teammate G Kidd, 43rd pick Michael Red, the most talented player in this class, the only one to make an all NBA team in 2004, only player in the list proving he can lead his team to the playoffs as a number one option, the fact that this class produced just one all star in the lottery, an absolute atrocity of all atrocities, 3 tall all star appearances, Kyle Lowry has twice as much as this whole class combined, even Paul Millsap made more all star teams than this class put together, an absolute travesty of a pathetic weak class, there's only 5 legit players worth having on a playoff caliber team as key role players, Red if healthy might have been a hall of famer, Jamal Crawford still playing in 2020, 3 times 6 man of the year winner, K Mark the second best player on a team that made 2 finals, Mike Miller a key piece for the Heat title teams and Hedo Turkoglu played his best ball in the 09 playoffs as the second option for the Magic, second to 4 pick Stroh Miles with Darius Miles and Marcus Pfizer all of whom huge boss. Maybe the 3 worst consecutive picks from 2 to 4 all time. Of the 58 players picked, only 15 lasted a decade in the association. None of these players will be in the Hall of Fame unless they end up being a great NBA coach or GM. Honorable mentions includes the 1997 class, Tim Duncan, Tracy McGrady, Chauncey Billups, only 3 All-Stars, role players Antonio Daniels, Derek Anderson, Steven Jackson, Bobby Jackson, and Keith Van Horn would have been the top 3 worst draft if it wasn't for the greatness of Duncan who became a 15 time all star and 5 time champ, the 2005 class, Chris Paul an all time great point guard, one of the 5 all stars in this draft, alongside Darren Williams, Danny Granger, David Lee and Andrew Bynum, a solid Lou Williams and Monte Ellis, a little better than the 83 class in my opinion, and 2010 not so good either, 4 total all stars, Paul George, John Wall, Gordon Hayward and DeMarcus Cousins, 16 total all star appearances so far, 8 all NBA teams, it will be up to Wall and George to put in more work the next couple seasons. Solid players includes Eric Bledsoe, Greg Monroe, Avery Bradley, Derek Favors, and Hassan Whiteside. PG will surely be a future Hall of Famer. Cousins unlikely. John Wall needs more good years. Although PG likely won't be better than Clyde Drexler all time, him and Wall will likely be better than the second best in the 83 class. Only time will tell. While the 2013 class won't be super terrible after all because of Giannis who has the tools to become an all time great. While the other recent classes, 2014 has two superstars in Jokic and Embiid, a bunch of solid role players, any class within the last 5 years, still too early to tell, a lot of young players will continue to improve. Which one of these draft classes were you most disappointed by? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching this video. Subscribe for more content, more great stuff coming soon. I love all of you. See you next time.